The USS Macon, original designation ZRS-5, was a rigid airship built by the United States Navy as a scout and patrol ship. She served as a flying aircraft carrier, able to launch and recover five Sparrowhawk biplanes using the same hook and trapeze system we see aboard the Pandora in Crimson Skies. She was powered by eight German-made 12-cylinder Maybach engines, able to produce 560 horsepower each. The propellers could be rotated in any direction to control the ship during takeoff and landings. In 1933, the Macon's home field became Naval Air Station Sunnyvale, later named Moffett Field. Well, folks, here we are at Naval Air Station Moffett Field here in Mountain View, California. Back in 1931, when this facility was first constructed, this entire area was farmlands and fields. Now it sits right in the heart of Silicon Valley. Within just a couple of miles of this area are some of the biggest technology companies in the world. Uh, over there to the west, we've got uh, the headquarters of Apple. A little ways to the south here, we've got the headquarters of eBay, PayPal, Intel, AMD, a bunch of other ones you can think of too. This is a pretty major technology area, which is a little strange and sad because this is kind of a forgotten place now. There's really no need for airship bases in the world anymore. Uh, this facility is now owned by NASA, and this is the NASA Ames Research Facility. Just over here is a huge wind tunnel assembly that kind of dominates the entire place now. Now, as you can see, People still work here, people still live here, this is still a military base, but there's not a whole lot of airship action happening here anymore. But, Hangar 1 is still intact. You can see it back there. We're going to go take a look right now. Sharing part of Moffett Field with NASA, the company Airship Ventures runs sightseeing tours from the base. Their headquarters is in one of the many repurposed buildings. As for the base itself, though long since abandoned, the skyline is still dominated by Hangar 1. Covering more than eight acres, Hangar 1 is one of the largest freestanding structures in the world. It was built in the 30s as a station for the Macon, and over the years it has been used by the Navy, the Army, and the Air Force. Unfortunately for all you historian types, Old Hangar 1's not going to be around a whole lot longer. Operation has started to tear down the entire thing. Turns out that old style of building from the 30s built the hangar with a lot of nasty chemicals and uh, paints and various other things that really uh, aren't allowed anymore. The destruction was supposed to be a two-part project. They were going to dismantle the entire thing and then rebuild it as part of a, uh, a historical initiative to keep these old buildings around, but it turns out they've only got enough money to tear it down. So over the next couple of years, uh, old Hangar 1 is going to be reduced to a skeleton. So, while Airship Ventures takes up that lonely little corner of the base, if we pan over here past hangars 2 and 3, over here we find the 129th Rescue Wing of the California Air National Guard. If we pan over, we can see a few of their fleet of C-130 Hercules aircraft. There's one and two more over here. It's not uncommon to see these guys on maneuvers all over the Silicon Valley area. And we pan just a little bit further, we can see a couple of their Black Hawk helicopters. These guys are common sights around here, since it's the 129th that gets called in to save all the foolish tourists who get themselves into trouble off the San Francisco Bay. Now, the reason I am behind this fence and not actually over there talking to these guys is the 129th and I do not have the best relationship. Believe it or not, it turns out that they do not enjoy having civilians wandering around their base with video cameras filming their proprietary military aircraft. So, I'm not allowed to go over there anymore. Uh, but, it's really not that interesting anyway. Now, the venture there of the Airship Ventures Sightseeing Company was constructed in Germany and shipped over here. Uh, I was a few years back 
the company went and started a, uh, a sightseeing tour operation that uh, flies all around the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, the, uh, the Monterey Area, and occasionally goes as far south as San Diego. Uh, they haven't been doing terribly well. You see they've had to sell advertising space on the side of their airship there, but it's really something to see this guy flying all around almost every day. You can see this ship on the horizon. Uh, and it's really nice to see airships in the air again, and particularly at Moffat again. The Venture's heading west for the coast. That's where we're headed next. A hundred miles south of Moffat Field on a rocky section of coastline lies our next stop, the crash site of the USS Macon. Here we are at Point Sur. Behind me over there is the Point Sur Naval Light Station. That was put in uh, about a hundred years ago. It was right here that the Macon was discovered. Out there, past that rock, is where the Macon went down. Some years after that, a fisherman lost a net in that area. He recorded where, and the U.S. Navy eventually took that information and found the wreck. He'd lost his net on part of the stabilizer fin at the bottom of the sea. Despite knowing where the fisherman lost his nets, they didn't find the wreck itself until 1990, because this is an extremely deep trench in this area. Even so, the U.S. Navy has not released the coordinates to the wreck, and it remains a secret to everybody except the Navy and some certain ocean researchers at the universities in this area. On February 12th, 1935, 75 years ago to the day, the Macon was returning from fleet maneuvers in San Diego. She was traveling up the California coastline right here, but here at Point Sur, a particularly nasty stretch of central California coastline, she hit a storm. A central stabilizer ring in the rear of the ship was compromised during a wind shear. That wind shear ripped the upper stabilizer fin off the ship, and the wreckage from that punctured the rear gas bags. She began losing helium fast. Acting quickly and on incomplete information, an immediate and massive discharge of ballast was ordered. Off balance, tail heavy, and with all engines going ahead full, the Macon rose past its pressure envelope and up to 5,000 feet where the emergency overpressure seals on the gas bags opened and vented all of that excess helium. Without enough helium to maintain positive buoyancy, the Macon began sinking. She settled in the sea, right here, tail first. She sank here, and it's here she lies, at the bottom of the sea. As impressive as airships are, and as romantic as the idea of lighter than air travel may be, airships just don't work. They have a disastrous service record, not just in America, but all over the world. Dozens have been lost throughout the years to weather, engineering failures, and operator error. The Macon project was doomed from the very beginning. You see, what the crew of the Macon never realized was they were dead before the ship even sank. 